Hi, my name is Joel. I'm going to show you how to make this trance sound using Roland's Xenology Pro software synthesizer. Alright, so that's the finished product. So uh, the only external processing I have is this EQ here, which I'll turn off, and the side chain to the kick there. I'll leave that on because I'll only be demonstrating without the kick. So I'll just make sure that's looping. Uh, I'm also going to remove the automation, bring the cutoff back to zero. Alright, so here we have Zen Roland Xenology Pro. So we're going to firstly choose an initialize patch. So to do that, you can click the name here, make sure you're on bank all, and click initial tone here. And this is what it's going to sound like. Just the default uh, piano sound. First thing, we will choose our bass sound. Not our bass, but the, the fundamental sound. So, going to click the name there. It'll open up your bank here. So, on the right-hand side on the categories, make sure Saw is selected. We're going to choose the Moog Saw HD as our foundation. So, listening to that going to bring the wave gain up be careful with this it gets pretty loud pretty quick so I'll bring the wave gain up to 0 dB and you can make sure it's not peaking at the top here I'm going to make sure that our sound is in mono as well so once one note plays it will override the previous note uh, so only one note can be played at a time so with this first sound, we could just work off that, but I'm going to make it a stereo sound just to get that really big width. So to do that, we're going to select the name here of the of the second one. Uh, make sure saw is selected in the category on the right hand side. I'm going to use this calc saw, the inverted saw wave. So listening to that now in stereo, this will be in our left ear. This will be in our right ear. All right. So we're going to apply a filter envelope to it now. Uh, so we're going to go into the filter selection here. Make sure filter selected. Choose the Moog filter and bring it down to about the 500, 550 mark, about halfway. Uh, so listening to that now, it's just applied the cut of filter cutoff. But we're going to add some envelope depth to it. So to do that, we're going to go to press envelope here. We're going to bring the sustain out and the delay up. Uh, and so what this is going to do is when the f when each note is played, it's going to start with the filter up here and then quickly bring it down to a minimal value. Uh, we have to make sure we bring the envelope depth up so it's the amount of the sound it's sending to the, the envelope. So we'll bring it up to about, let's go to about 10 to start. We're just going to use our ears and listen to how it sounds. We're going to adjust the decay time. <laughs> Change the envelope depth. That's pretty cool around there. Now if we play with the master cutoff here, we can see, we can uh, fine tune it and, and listen to the effect as we open and close the filter. So when it's fully closed, when it's fully open, All right, that's nice. So that's our foundation sound there. Uh, what we will do now is we, we're going to copy partial one and we're going to paste it on partial two and partial three. So we take partial, go to uh, pro edit mode here and then utility on the left, we click utility, copy, tone partial one. Then we utility, paste, tone partial two. So now we've got two partials playing the same thing at the same time. So all it's going to do is give us a little bit of increase in volume. <laughs> But to differentiate them, what we're going to do is we're going to go into pitch, uh, back in visual edit mode here, select pitch, and we're going to change the course tune of partial two here. Uh, we're going to turn it up an octave, so 12 semitones. So, so just listening to partial two, and just partial one together. And we're going to 
slightly detuned partial two, so it gives it that super saw sound. So I'll give you a radical example of it first. But it gets to a point where it's not musical anymore, so we just gotta find that sweet spot. Seven it is. So that's our two main sounds there working in unison with each other. And we're going to go back into Pro Edit Mode, Utility, Copy, Tone Partial 1, Utility, Paste, Tone Partial 3. We're going to use Partial 3 as a tone, uh, as a noise generator. So we're going to go back into Oscillator Selection Mode here and back into Visual Edit. And we're going to take the, we're going to turn Partial 3 into a noise generator. So it's going to sound a bit obnoxious at the start. But to fix that, we're going to go into the amp envelope here, and we're just going to change the amplitude envelope. So we're going to bring the sustain down, and then the, the decay, we'll just bring it down to pretty short, so you can, and you can hear that as I'm changing it. Now if we change the master cutoff frequency. It's a little bit loud, so I'm just going to bring the overall volume of the partial 3 down. So without it, with it. So it's just adding that little little like clicky sort of fuzzy sound at the start of every note. And if we change the master freak filter cut off again. That's it for the synthesis. Now we're just going to add a delay uh, and then an EQ and then we're going to call it done. So we'll go make sure master effects is selected here, MFX. Down the bottom it says MFX through. So we click through, delay, and we're going to add a mid side delay onto this sound. So what that's going to do is it's going to have the sound playing and then it's going to have a delay in the middle and then a delay on the sides as well. So we're going to turn sync on so the delay synchronizes to the beats. Uh, we're going to leave the mid delay on quarter notes and we're going to change the side delay to half dot, uh, dotted half notes. So I'll bring the volume of the mid delay down. And you can hear what that's doing there. Uh, and I'm going to bring the level of the mid delay up a little bit here. The mid doesn't need too much, so I'll try to leave that a little bit lower than the side delay. And I'm also going to mess with the feedback a little bit, so I'll bring the mid feedback down so it's not clashing too much. And I think that's, uh, that's about it. If we add a little EQ on here, all I've done with the EQ is I've... Uh, cut the low frequencies, the sub frequencies from 60 hertz down by 3 decibels, and then the high frequencies around 5000 hertz up 3 decibels. I cut 200 because it's a pretty nasty frequency, and then I boosted sort of uh, just above the 1k. So I'll move this around so you can hear the sound difference it makes. Obviously, depending on your final mix, it's going to make uh, it's going to change where you boost frequency or cut a frequency. But I find just around the 1k, a little bit higher, you get some nice uh, tonal qualities to the sound. Yeah, and then so now what we can do, I'll just delete this here. So what we can do is we can add the ma these controls here with, uh, to a macro knob, and then we can use that to automate it. But we're only going to use the cutoff frequency, so I'm going to click configure here, and then when I move one of these parameters, it's going to add it, as you can see there. So now, while it's playing, I can turn this slider here. And now I can automate it, so right click, show automation, I'm going to start it off low, and I'm going to bring it to full, and I'm going to bring it back down, and then in Ableton holding Alt, uh, I can make curves. So curve down. So now when we listen to that, I'm going to turn looping off.
there you have it. Fairly standard trance arpeggio sound. Thanks for watching. Bye.